sauce at that fuego, yeah Stay with that sauce like Alfredo, yeah Blessings, they come when he say so Hold up, hi to my haters, I'm Mano, yeah I put my homies on payroll, yeah Hey, how y'all doing? This is Rick Sincere with MTNV Sports. So happy to be joined today by my team, MTNV Sports Podcast Network team. Man, the crew is in the building. Um, Miles, oh, yeah. go ahead and say what's up to the people, bro. What's going on, man? It's your boy, Miles Austin from MTNV Sports here. Hard in the paint, man. Check out NBA updates, everything you want to talk about. I am Miles Austin, everything. What's up? Bad, bad, bad. Venora, how you doing, man? I'm good. It's been Nora Lewis, also known as Nora Natish, and I am the host of the V Report. And please check it out every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Awesome. Ooh. Voice, what's good, bro? What's good, everybody? It's your man, The Voice, Fights Correspondent for MTMV Sports, host of the MTMV main card, keeping you up to date with the Fight Nights nice update, uh, all things combat sports. I'm your man. Yo, today was um today was the trade deadline, and we will get into that because the trade deadline was was really really hyped up. There was so much talk going on. Um, but before we hop into the trade deadline, here's how we're gonna run. We're gonna first talk uh, talk about what happened with the um the Packers and the Chiefs. Just kind of you know what happened with the ramifications of what happened with that. Uh, we'll get into a little bit of Matt Moore and then how that offense kind of responded to not having Patrick Mahomes, the league MVP, going into that particular game and how Aaron Rodgers, once again, is, is shining and looking like somebody who could be possibly an MB- MVP candidate, but we'll talk about that. Yes, we'll hop into the trade deadline hype and all the names that were being dropped today on Twitter um, and, and what actually materialized from that. And then um, third, we'll talk about the NBA season, who's been impressive throughout the course of the first week of the season as we hop into week two of the NBA. Oh, yeah. And then finally, we'll talk about the return of the madman, McGregor. Um, and we'll talk about um, kind of why the voice doesn't want to talk about McGregor. He's not <laughs> excited whatsoever. <laughs> so, so <laughs> let's hop in, y'all. Here we go. First off, man, the um, the Packers went against the Chiefs this week. The Packers, who are 7-1 and one right now, and a lot of people are saying that a sleeper team is one of the best teams in the NFL. You look at what's happening with the 49ers, which we've all grown to respect. Um, you look at what's happening with the Saints, right? Being uh, minus Drew Brees, but still keeping their record at 7-1. and one. And these Packers, right, just are chugging along, missing every single receiver at some point during the season. But it doesn't matter. They keep moving along. And in this yeah. one, they beat the Chiefs, the Patrick mahomes list Chiefs, 31-24. to 24. Um, Just straight up, like, when you watch that game, looking at that Chiefs offense minus Patrick Mahomes, Bonora, just just talk to us. How did you feel about that team? And did you feel that it needs a Patrick Mahomes in order for it to run efficiently? I believe Patrick Mahomes would was missing piece here. Like, if he was here, I think this game would have went over time. I don't think it would have been um, – I think it would have been a battle between him and Aaron Rodgers who can throw, them, who can throw the furthest and, and do the best. Because Matt Moore, even though he did throw two touchdowns and had 267 yards – he was still wasn't comfortable with his offense. And um, throughout the mm. game, he did um, have a little bit, have a few hiccups that I know Pat, Patrick Mahomes wouldn't have had. That definitely changed how the game turned out. Um, Aaron Rodgers himself, uh, you know, I know he's like one of the, the, to me, the second best quarterback in the game, and he played like he is the second best quarterback in the game. He was stellar that day. And is Patrick Mahomes the first? Yeah, <laughs> that's not what she meant. It's Tom Brady. No, so no, I'm just asking. Yeah, I was, I was I'm just asking. saying the best quarterback in the game. Wait, is who? Is Tom Brady. Then she said Tom Brady. Rock, in my view. No, no, that's not true either. But okay, continue. <laughs> uh, we're not gonna, okay, we're not gonna get Tom Brady this loud. But yes, um, Aaron Rodgers actually did very well, uh, especially like he just said, like his receivers are one's always out. He's like working with, I would say, not much, but he's still producing top level um, games. Like to be seven to one and not have your full team. Each week sure. is very stellar. Sure. I am concerned sure. about the Chiefs, though, because Pat Mahomes still has to heal, and I just don't want them to be catching up in the playoffs instead of having a dominant seat. My problem with the Chiefs is that it seems like Patrick Mahomes is kind of calling the shots a little bit in his return, and he's rushing it a little bit more than yeah. he may need to. Um, there sure. were talks that he might play in this game, mm-hmm. and I thought that yeah. was. 
I think that's way too crazy. So yeah. my my biggest concern with him is just the fact that he may rush the process and they may let him. Yeah. Which is something that he can't yeah. do because um, Matt Moore wasn't bad. He wasn't bad at all, but um, he just wasn't Pat- Patrick Mahomes. If he rushes it, yeah. he's um, prone to more injury, which will definitely, I believe, will knock the Chiefs out in the first, season, first round if they lose him. Now, what, what is the Chiefs <laughs> right now? Sorry? The Chiefs record right now, what is it? Five and three. Five and three. Five and three. Okay. I, mean, I can see what Mahomes, Mahomes. Yeah, if Mahomes tries to come back too quickly, he could threaten his career. Uh, yeah. Really being uh, penny wise and, and pound foolish uh, doing something of that nature. Um, I don't know. Whenever you deal with backup quarterbacks, generally the first week or two, possibly three they look good and then after that it's generally downhill unless you're uh hardball back in the 90s or uh <laughs> Kurt Warner salute to Kurt Warner um but generally y- your backups don't come in and 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 do the deal so if you look at the next two games for them the next game is um November 3rd versus the Vikings and then after that November 10th versus the Titans if Patrick Mahomes is un- if Patrick Mahomes is unable to perform or unable to go, how do you foresee those two games ending? Do you see them um ending two and zero oh, or one and one or zero oh and two? One and one. I, I think they can lose both. I think it's very possible. Now Minnesota to me has been um, consistent. I think they've they've always been in the con- not always been but the past couple of years they've been in the conversation for being a very good team. In the sense, I mean, you think about, the, I mean, after the, the miracle in Minnesota and the game after the, where they take the L. However, um, I think I think that is a game they can lose. And Tennessee has this has this uh, this knack of being surprising. I, I'm not sure what they have. They simply, simply have been in the games here this this season. Obviously, not as good as a team as the Chiefs. Um, but like I said the last time we had the conversation about the Chiefs and Patty Mahomes going down, this is this is going to be a, a, a microscope on Andy Reid. And what he's able to do with the the backup quarterback that he has on the offense, so I think it's going to, to kind of prove, Andy Reid, are you willing to put together an offense and make your backup quarterback comfortable? And like Panora said, with two touchdowns and 268 yards, it didn't seem like he, he had an issue, but throughout the game, you could see that he was a little bit uncomfortable in doing what he was doing. So the point of the coach in Andy Reid's role, like Sean Payton in New Orleans, he has made. Um, the offense comfortable for the quarterback that is behind center. Teddy Bridgewater, the, I mean, what the Saints have done through these, what, five or six games, five, um, five games basically doing that has been a, in a testament to Sean Payton and his coaching skills. So I think Andy Reid has to step into that, and I think if he does, they can obviously beat both of these teams, but Minnesota will be more of a challenge um, yep. as, as they go through it. Yeah, yeah especially still- with the uh, quarterback – Turnover there in uh, Tennessee with Mariota sure. being there. Yeah, sure. but um, actually, the funny part is that Ryan Tannehill has looked pretty good as the as the leader of that um, Tennessee offense, and he's starting wow. to connect with his primetime weapons. And so, um, th- this this could be something. I mean, granted, they did only play the Bucks, but he looked good in that role. All right, guys. Yeah. So, um, and that's funny that you bring up the name Marcus Mariota because he was another name that was dropped. All day long as somebody who could have been moved. So the yeah. the overall thought was that Marcus Mariota would be moved to the Bears, right, and take the role of Mitch Trubisky, who is struggling right now as their starting quarterback. A few other moves uh, were supposed to take place today. Odell Beckham, he was on the block apparently. I can believe that. And a lot of people were making making moves for him. There, I think it's more so him just not super falling in love with the Browns culture or loving Cleveland. And so probably that's what made him available today. Le'Veon Bell was a big name that popped up on Twitter. If you that's saw crazy. names, that is insane. But if you saw yeah. names popping up, Lev Lev Bell was he was open. He was out there on the trade market. Robbie Anderson, wide receiver. For the um, Jets, he was on the market, wide open yeah. and available as well. A.J. Green, I heard rumors today. Actually, a guy, um, the enemy, he's a guy um, on 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 uh, Saints Twitter. So if you follow Saints Twitter at all, in which you guys don't, but I do. Um, if you... No, we don't. Not at all. Anyway, so no, if you follow Saints Twitter, at some <laughs> point today, 
this guy, he calls all his sources sauces, right? So he was like, my sauces tell me this. My sauces tell me that, right? <laughs> and so he was saying that his sauces told him that A.J. Green to the Saints was a done deal. And people start responding. Wow. As if it was a done deal because the enemy is generally somebody who gets it right, right? Um, but he got it wrong, wrong. And and he was he was eating crow today. And so A.J. <laughs> Green stayed put. Saints didn't get a wide receiver. They were looking to add. In, Nothing actually happened. In in the final year of his contract as well. So that was that was a big move to say, okay, maybe we can get something done and get you to stay in Cincinnati. I, I don't I don't see a reason why he stays there. Um, I, I, if I'm Cincinnati, I'm looking to get a first round pick, two first yeah. round picks if I can for AJ Green because I I don't know if he's staying. And if you don't have a confirmation from a, a wide out who is, is good, a top ten wide out as AJ Green. You got you to gotta make your moves and be smart for the organization. I don't believe that was a good move if they don't know that he's going to stay and resign and extend his contract. One of the biggest issues that I see with that situation is that he's coming back, but the quarterback, right, is not the Andy guy. Andy Dalton anymore. is not. He's been. They're that switching was over to Ryan today. Finley. They yeah. are switching. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. On his birthday. Andy got benched. On his birthday? Yes. Yeah, yes. Birthday. Yes. Okay, look, at the, at the end of the day, it was his birthday. He got benched. He's still a millionaire. So I don't really. There's no sympathy for me, really. Yeah, I, I was gonna say it. I, I'd rather be benched than cut. I feel bad. <laughs> birthday. Could you feel bad? Worse. His bank account don't feel bad. Huh? That check at the end of the week don't feel bad. Bro, money can't it. buy better feelings, and he feels <laughs> <laughs> he feels bad, bad. Like there's there's something that goes along with. Okay, cool. You still got a job. But the fact that you get benched for a Ryan yeah. Finley, that goes on your Twitter resume. That that goes on your, that, that's on it's your page, right? Like it's the fact blemish. that you've been benched for Ryan Finley, because Ryan Finley leads the who is that situation for me, right? <laughs> so you look at you look at him, Andy Dalton, right? I think it's so bad because he lost his big time weapon. His weapon That's is AJ true. Green. They have a great chemistry. Why would yeah. why would you wait until AJ Green gets back? Why would you wait till AJ Green gets back to then bench yeah. him? He's been playing because with Tyler Boyd. This, this, this is your rookie. This is a person that you're looking to to possibly take over things. I mean, how long has Dalton been in the league? Now, granted, they did give him a nice little contract a couple years ago, but that was only after putting together a couple good games. The Bengals have been absolutely horrible for quite some time you know aka the bungles so you have to do something to mix things up and to to switch things up and even though they have that chemistry how long can you continue to go down the same road with the same results yeah i'm gonna be honest with y'all i think this is a trust the process move you think so yeah i think i think what the problem is is that and I think it's, you said it perfectly, that when you look at Andy Dalton, Andy Dalton and what he's able to do with an A.J. Green, and they did have some success in the past couple of years, but what, what happens when you lose your primetime receiver and you have to expand your quarterback skills? I, I think through these games that A.J. has been down, he hasn't shown that, and I think that points directly to the why he's being benched in the sense of saying, okay, if you don't have A.J. Green, yeah, you seem like you're no good to us. I think the, the expansion of his skills on the, this is an opportunity for him to show I'm more than a quarterback. And I'm more than just, I can just throw to AJ green. And he, ha- he hasn't shown that. And that's been consistent over the past few games. Yo, there, there was a few other names that dropped, right? Um, one of the other name that dropped was Jamal Adams safety for the New York jets to the Cowboys. And they were going to give up a King's ransom to get yeah. him in. Um, the jets wisely held on to Jamal Adams. Cause he is a dog. He, is. he definitely is, yeah. And the other name that popped up was Trent Williams, who ended his holdout today to go back to the Redskins. The Browns have called every single week trying to get this man on their team. They finally made him available yesterday, right, just in time for him to be like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm going to just go to work. And so <laughs> I feel like it. this this was so much hype. And actually, can y'all imagine what would have happened if all this stuff actually went down? It would have been insane. Twitter would have been sure. Completely sure. out of whack. All yeah, right. But, yeah, it would have it shut down today. But outside of that, man, moving on from the NFL to the NBA, which when the NBA said they were going to dominate headlines, they did. 
right? It was no hype yes. when it when it actually was going to be something to talk about. Man, as soon as uh, the signing period opened for them, they dominated headlines up until um the beginning of their season. After all of the hype, after all of the moves, after all of the stuff, when we actually start playing basketball, Miles, in week one, bro, what has it been like? Week one has been uh, a, a roller coaster of emotions. So, so you, you talk about from the beginning of uh, of the NBA, you talk about the, the the purest NBA fan just being able to see NBA again. The NBA is back. You talk about the Battle of LA, um, which my Lakers ended up ended up losing. I, I'll have to take that L. However, uh, the Clippers do look absolutely amazing, and Paul George is not even back on the court yet. So that's going to be a crazy team um, as they as they play in the West. Um, I also believe just seeing everything in NBA, you know, having NBA Tuesday where you just have all, all, all 30 teams just playing basketball. I think the first week was definitely impressive. We've seen uh, teams who are just like themselves and we, we expect them to be at the bottom of the pack of the Eastern and Western Conference. Uh, teams that we expect to be at the top, like a Philadelphia, um, who we're expecting to, you know, maybe take the East um, in, in Philadelphia, Milwaukee, Boston. Um, that hurts to say. I'm gonna wipe my tongue. Give me a sec. Um, and then Brooklyn, who um, who has been who have been in close games. Kyrie Irving has made a, a great effort on the court. Just this, those these wins haven't materialized the way that they wanted to. Um, but the Western Conference is stacked, man, and I'm thoroughly excited to see who's gonna come out of the West. Uh, NBA fans are saying whoever comes out the West will probably win. Uh, the NBA, the NBA title, but you know that's why that's why you play the game. We just saw the Warriors, you know, play the first two games of the season and get blown out by twenty plus. We expected the Clippers. We didn't expect um, them losing like they did to the Oklahoma City Thunder. However, um, you know, we, we're going to see how this whole thing plays out. Man, basketball is back, and I'm thoroughly excited about it. Yo, talk to me about my Pelicans for a minute. Um, they're on four, but Ingram's going off. Lonzo yeah. Ball's playing well. Right, Very much so. the team seems to be good, but not quite good enough. What do they yeah. need to get over the hump? Is it is it a healthy Drew Holiday? What, what, what's there? I I think it's going to be just consistency, man. I think with with third and fourth year players, you talk about Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, um, Zion Williamson going down, Drew Holiday's out. Um, Jackson Hayes actually got to play yesterday, um, or, the, or the day before yesterday in, in in the third game of the season, and he looked he looked absolutely amazing on the court, gelling with the team. Do the um, dog, and, yeah, definitely. And and I think what they're able to put on the product that they're able to put on the floor is going to be a good one. I think when Zion is able to get back and fully healthy, and Drew Holiday is back and fully healthy, um, Alvin Gentry is doing something um, that most coaches wouldn't be able to do, and that's bring a team together who was brought together in the off season. You sign a big name um, in the, in the draft, getting the number one pick, and bringing in a couple rookies who who look like they'd be able to to contribute a lot to on the floor. I think New Orleans could be a sneaky pick if they get it all together and the chemistry is right. They could sneak into the playoffs. Yo, okay, you know before you say anything, I, I got a quick question. Yes, sir. Because you named off all these players that are coming along in the third year. This is just the Lakers East, right? So, <laughs> and and they've of- been doing the same thing. This core group of guys have been doing the same thing pretty much all their career. So yeah. how is it different now? Well, I think I think what, when you look at a player like a Brandon Ingram who is trying to come out of his shell, you, when you have somebody who comes into the situation as a LeBron James, um, you, you have to dial back your game a little bit and figure out what your role is going to be on that team. In this, in this offense that they have, Everybody has a role, and I don't think that those roles were defined as much as possible, <laughs> assigned as much as possible, um, coming coming off of, out of Los Angeles. Lonzo Ball uh, was 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 hurt most of the season. He's starting and playing um, to get with a point guard like Drew Holiday. He had Rondo in L.A., um, but I think this team just has the opportunity to do something. Josh Hart is great on both sides of the ball. Brandon Ingram is getting a lot more opportunity. Um, and when you get Zion back, I think that these team, this, these people can mesh together, and and, and it can do it could be something that that most people didn't expect. Yo, um, <laughs> t- talk to me quickly. Talk to me quickly, um, because this is what's going on. A lot of people are talking about it. I'm gonna even ask Venor. Venor, I know you've been hearing about it. Whatever. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Venor, um, yo. Is this the end of the Warriors dynasty? 
Like I saw a meme where it was it was the Warriors, right? The Golden State Warriors logo. Yeah. And y'all know that um Scooby Doo thing, and they took off the yeah. mask of the current <laughs> Warriors, and it was the old <laughs> Warriors thing. And I was like, Oh, yeah. that's hard, that's cold blooded, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. is this the end? Is it over? I think we're at we're heading to the decline. I don't even see the Warriors. I can see them being like like just making the playoffs, like just making it, but I don't see I them going see anywhere. It. Like, like it's just Curry is amazing. I'm not gonna sit here and ever doubt Steph Curry. For sure. Clay Thompson, when, he, when he's on, he's on. But yeah. without KD, it's just hasn't. They haven't moved this. They don't move the same groove. The groove yeah, is yeah. off. And it's without KD, because you're like you're just used to them just killing everybody, but instead they yeah. just got washed for two games yeah, straight. Yeah. For sure. Okay, let me ask this question then. Yes, sir. Like you said, they're they're going through some different things. Mm-hmm. It's only three games into the season. Yeah. Um, what's the name? Uh, not uh, the other Splash brother, not Steph, but um, Clay Thompson. Thank you. He's not playing right now. So, no. and you got a new player that's been inserted into things. Yeah. Don't you need to give us some time? I, okay, so so the, the issue is like... I'm sorry, that was for Noah. My bad. Right, oh, right. okay. Well, um, yeah, of course, you need to give me some time to see how people adjust and um, like, adapt to the situation. But like you said, like, Clay Thompson's not playing right now. He's always hurt. So, you like, right now, the Warriors don't have pieces that can push them to the championship over the other team. Since they're already in the West, they've got a really difficult division so to even try to like of course i want them to give the best effort and they could probably do very do pretty decent i just don't see playoff like talent besides um clay thompson and steph curry on the team right now i just don't see it miles and Vanora said, playing. miles Vanora said without kd they just don't look like themselves but if you ask draymond we never need no kd they've been doing this for years before <laughs> kd ever came on the team so, 73 and 9, you gotta remember. Yeah. It is what it yeah. is. So, yeah, I, is this I a KD it, situation? I don't think it's a KD situation. Um, obviously, they're gonna look different when you, when you remove a top three player in the NBA. Um, yep. But if you talk about, I mean, this, this 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 team lost a lot more than just KD. There's no yes. there's no Iggy, there's no Sean Livingston. There's no, their, their bench is, they have nine new players on the team. That they're all trying to get together. You have rookies, second year players, no name people that you're, you're we're gonna have to get used to hearing new names on the Golden State Warriors. I think that's just what it is. Um, but when you talk about when you talk about names that you don't know, that means I can key on and key my defense to a team where we know that Steph Curry is the best shooter who ever played basketball. I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna force my team to play to play double teams, run off run them off of picks. Uh, we're gonna close off the and break off the back doors because what the Warriors live off of is a pick and roll with Draymond uh, diving to the goal and dropping to the center on the alley oop. Now that opens up the rest of the team, but when you don't have Clay Thompson to open up Steph, when D'Angelo isn't playing the way that he should be, um, the same the same offensive scheme that they've had for the past few years isn't going to work. So when you, I think D'Angelo Russell is going to have to be a little bit more of a facilitator as well as a knockdown shooter um, to go ahead and open up Steph Curry. And Draymond's going to have to be a little bit more than he has been over the past three years with KD in the system itself. The the Warriors, over the span of since Draymond has been, I believe it may just be in the championship era, the last five years, I saw this stat earlier, uh, the Warriors are undefeated when Draymond gets a triple-double. Never lost. When he gets a triple double, they have never lost a game. So that's something that Draymond's going to have to be consistently. They won their first game over the weekend. He ended up getting the triple double. So what's going to happen is that Draymond's going to have to insert himself into be into a bigger role for the Golden State Warriors than he has been with KD on the court. So some choices to be made, but Draymond's got to step up and and, and facilitate. He's got to score. He's going to be the best defensive player on the floor. And and I I feel like the glue of the team, Draymond Green, is going to have to be that. Um, so you know. Can. Yeah, All right. So, um, 
I love the fact that we end up talking about Draymond. The thing that people love about Draymond Green is he's the heart and soul of that right. team. Some people call him the fighter of that team. So switching over into talking about the UFC is just a perfect transition for us. Yes, so sir. I need to talk about one of the guys who's coming back into the UFC um, the mixed martial arts sphere of things, right? Um, after a little bit of a layoff due to his own foolishness, I'll say. Um, and now... <laughs> He's coming back and trying to make, um, I don't know if it's make amends or, or make a better name for himself or change his legacy, but either way, Conor McGregor is back. He just recently made an appearance at a beginner's <laughs> at a beginner's mixed martial arts and boxing class and just immediately hops in and starts yelling at random <laughs> and starts yelling and shouting at first time mixed martial arts boxers. Right, telling them how to punch and how they're not doing it right, and and y'all know how kind of McGregor is, man. He's making his return back to mixed martial arts, and the voice is I not excited. Him. He's not excited. Voice, why are you not excited about the return of the king of mixed martial arts? Well, as I stated, allegedly returning. Um, Kyle's got way too much stuff going on outside of MMA right now to be able to say that he's going to return. What he's doing is what he has done for the past couple years, which is just continue to insert himself into the conversation. There is no pay-per-view for January right now. Nothing's on the books. So for him to say, I'm going to be uh, at at, uh, T-Mobile on January 18th, no, we don't know that. You, sir, may not even be amongst uh, uh, the general people in Dublin, you might be in general population because he has two rape cases right now. Jeez. Two. That's on top of punching an old man for not taking his drink. He's out here doing this stuff because he's starting to lose money on the alcohol business and he has to stay relevant. That's it, which is the reason why I didn't want to talk about him. He doesn't deserve any kind of talk whatsoever because that's all he's doing outside of behaving in an absolutely deplorable fashion. All he's doing is talking. So the voice, talk to me, man. If, if he's out there just talking or anything like that, if he were to actually score a fight, who would it be against? You. <laughs> you said if, if he were to have a fight, what? If he were to actually get a fight, like let's say, for instance, he's out there, he's trying to get a fight. Let's say he was for he actually got one. Who would it be against? Right now, they're talking about Cowboy Cerrone, which um, for him, that'd be the best fight because it's the easiest, most winnable fight. The fight that the people want is just engaging because it would mm-hmm. end Connor's career. Um, I mean, sure. Whoa, whoa, is, whoa. In his career? In his career. He's the king. What do you mean in his career? Uh, how are you the king when you haven't won in over three years? You the king of losing? Who? Who? But you can't, you yeah, you, he's the king of losing. Lost to, to him back. Lost to Khabib when he came back to MMA. Lost to... um. Oh, father, who did he lose the belt to in the first place? Um, but he hasn't fought. He hasn't fought. He's been losing all over the place. Yeah. And, yeah, you're not the king. You're not the king of anything. No. Nope. But losing and doing nope. reckless stuff. You talk about jumping in and um, uh, yelling at kids. The thing that really started it off was him jumping into the cage of the other promotion while a fight was going on to congratulate one of the people that was fighting when the fight wasn't over yet. <laughs> Yo, so he lost to he lost to Khabib, right? But he did win against um Alvarez, right? That was in 2016. Yeah, that was the last time he won. That's that's real. Like I said, but he, you haven't won in three years. But he took on a brand new thing by going into boxing. Mm-hmm. And you haven't won in three years. And if he comes back right now. The top three people would kill him. Again, if he fights Gagey, his career is done. There's no coming back from that. Because 
Talking big stuff. Spicy talk. Ain't it? Well, I mean, go ahead. No, 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 no but it's ahead. done. It's done. You you haven't fought. All you've done is done stupid stuff. Every Ooh. time you fight, you lose. And Gagey is a killer. He is a killer and would tear Connor's head off. That's the one that I really want to see. That's the one that most fight fans want to see because he's not going to do it. If he fought Tony Ferguson, which God forbid that happens, he needs to fight Khabib next, he would get killed. If he fought Dustin Poirier, who he beat at uh, Featherweight, he just might get that L. <laughs> Shout out to Conrad with the spicy talk. So, Man, I see um, voice. But I, I don't want to talk about uh, Conor because he doesn't deserve to be talked about. Doesn't Do something deserve. worthwhile and I'll talk about you. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. We, we appreciate it. We'll, we'll stay in our place and uh, you know, not ask about him anymore. <laughs> 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 All right, y'all. Look, hey, that's that's a wrap for us today, man. It's been so much good stuff that we've talked about today. We it's had a sweet. really, really good show. All right, hey, let's just start um, our sign-offs, man. Venora, go ahead and start us off with the sign-off. Bye, guys. It's Venora Lewis, also known as Norna Tish. Also, go Knicks, our first win yesterday. Hey. All right, all right. Um, Miles, what's good? Talk to us. Yo, man, it's your boy Miles Austin here. MTMV Sports, NBA correspondent, hard in the paint. Shout out to the Lakers, Raiders, the Dodgers. Shout out to the Seahawks, my man Russell Wilson. I support you, big homie. Um, check it out, man. Every week, NBA updates. We got hard in the paint coming, coming full force weekly. Let's talk about it. You got spicy talk about the NBA? I'm your man to talk to. Let's do it. All right, voice. Tell the people goodbye. <laughs> uh I, I will do as told goodbye you can tell them more than that <laughs> no, you, you, I, I i i believe in doing what i'm told so um fight fans sports fans goodbye <laughs> yo hey man this is rick's said mtmv <laughs> come on boy <laughs> Yo, this is Rick Sincere, MTNV Sports. Yo, check us out um, on a week-to-week basis. You can check us here. We're always here on YouTube. You can catch this weekly every time we drop. Um, If you're wondering, hey, when when is the next one coming? It's coming next week. And if you yeah. want a, a quick update, all you have to do is join our Facebook group. Hop in our Facebook group. It's wide open to the public. Just look up MTNV um, Sports, and you'll be able to find us. Go ahead and hop in the Facebook group. We would love to hear your opinions back and forth about these issues. Can't wait to hear from you. If you like, you know what? Um, <laughs> if you want to hear more, <laughs> then another thing you can do is you can hop on um, Apple Podcasts, look up MTNV Sports, and daily we're dropping new podcasts. Um, we talked sure. about Matt Moore earlier. Well, there's a podcast for that, the Red and Bow podcast um, by Will Smith. That pops off every week. You heard us talk about Conor McGregor. Well, there's a podcast for that, right? The main, um, it's main, main event, the MTNV main, 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 main event. Main, main card. card, MTV main card. That happens every Friday, religiously, right? Just every Friday morning, something's going to pop up for you. If you're like, hey, man, I want to know about fantasy football. Well, we got you covered, right? Every Tuesday morning, you're going to get a brand new episode of Expert Fantasy Football Advice with your boy, Rick Sincere. So, and yeah, look, if you're like, hey, I want to watch something, all you got to do is hop on our YouTube channel. We have more and more stuff coming for you on a week-to-week Always. basis. Thank you so much for joining us. We absolutely love you and appreciate you. And we can't wait to be right back here next week talking to you again. Sauce at that fuego, yeah. Stay with that sauce like Alfredo, yeah. Blessings they come when he say so. Hold up, hot to my haters, I may know, yeah. I put my homies on payroll, yeah. Placed at the top like a Kanko, uh. I throw the deuce up to silence my enemies, right through that potato. <laughs>